G'day everyone, welcome to Concrete Pouring Day. Um, truck's coming about 30 minutes and uh, we're gonna be filling in uh, all the trenches I've dug here for the footings uh, for the house. So uh, I'm gonna have some helpers come as well because as much as I like to build things on my own, uh, nothing would piss off the truck driver more than showing up to a 10 yard pour with uh, one person. So uh, I'm gonna have four or five people here to help me out, which is great. Um, and I'll quickly walk around and show you what I've done, hanging the rebar and for bringing in the utilities. So starting with the rebar and the uh, grade boards. So these two by fours that run along here, uh, the bottom of them are at the grade height. So we're gonna be filling concrete to the bottom of those is one roughly every six feet. Um, and to not have any ground contact with the rebar, it's all being suspended from those, uh, those grade markers. And then over here, uh, this is where the fresh water is going to come into so that one is buried underneath the footing. Uh, and then the other two are going to be septic and the electricity. And septic is going to run through the footing. So that's a sleeve, a six inch sleeve. The four inch pipe is going to run through the middle of that. Um, it just needed to be that height to get the proper slope. Um, this is our, our load bearing wall is just sitting on chairs, uh, not suspended. And then over here, we've got the uh, electricity coming through so uh, i've done three just because i don't know what size conductors i'm going to need yet haven't worked that out uh, again they're going to come through the footing so yeah there won't be any weight on top of it uh the, the concrete should pour around that and um yeah that's pretty much it so uh that's all set nothing else to do time to pour Apologies for what would have been a pretty long and maybe boring time lapse. Uh, we ended up pouring all this and then in case I had extra, uh, which is what I had obviously planned for, I didn't want to have just the right amount. Um, I made a little form for a slab in front of the shed. So that got poured as well if you saw the truck kind of disappearing and then coming back. Um, but the good news is, yeah, we got it all uh, laid in and level. Um, these, uh, the verticals are uh, basically every 32 inches on center. So they're gonna hit every fourth hole or every second block. Um, and then they start at 12 inches from the corner. So uh, if you're asking why there's some that are different heights, that's not really intentional. Uh, I had originally uh, planned for a taller foundation wall, which is why those ones are longer. Uh, but now it would just be a 24 inch wall and a, a lower crawl space. And so um, naturally the rebar didn't need to be as long once I worked that out. So. Um, I've gone around and kind of given it a rough finish again. This is all going to be buried underground. It just needs to be, uh, you know, level and relatively smooth. This is going to need about seven days to kind of get to a point of uh, curing that I'd be confident with starting to work with it. Okay, it's been a week now since we poured this and plenty of time for it to set, uh, at least enough to take off the, uh, the forms that are around all the penetrations here for fresh water and for the, uh, the electrical and that sort of stuff. So. Um, let's pull those off now. Uh, one thing I will talk about before I do everything else, which is something you might have noticed before I poured all this, that there was three runs of rebar through here. Uh, now code is for two, and code is also for a minimum eight inch deep footing. It's, yeah, uh, vertical height. And so um, you would have obviously seen 10 yards of concrete for this, you know, thousand square foot area uh, was way more than what it needed to be. So um, the third run of rebar, which was on the top, in the top third, the other two were in the bottom third as they normally would be. Um, and that was just to provide a little extra strength for that extra depth. Um, one thing I will say in terms of uh, the method here, having these, uh, these wedges for the grade height um, and then suspending the rebar from it 
So all of that was just to keep the rebar from being touching the ground um, or having a, a, like a conductive connection from the ground up to the rebar, which would have been if I had done pins in the ground um, and then if I had just tied them to the pins, so um, like grade pins. Now I'd say that was it worked, but it didn't work great. If I was gonna do it again, I would do more of a hybrid system where I would put in grade pins, but I would not attach the rebar to the pin. So I don't have a, a conductive um, path from the rebar to the ground. Uh, instead, uh, I would just, yeah, have the, uh, the same blocks here, suspend them across the top, hang the rebar from that same as I did because that worked just fine. Um, but I think the pins um, would have been a better gauge of depth and I could have done them with more frequency uh, along the edge. But um, it looks fine to me. Um, there might be some little high and low spots that I need to um, just you know, vary the depth of the grout uh, as I start laying the block. But um, yeah, that again is just something I would do different, but I will get my chance to do it differently when we expand this house later on so you'll see that method hopefully within a year anyway let's get this uh form torn off and check out how it looks Forms are pretty easy to pull off and what's exposed uh, looks good to me. I don't see any voids or cavities in there. So um, that that was all we were aiming for really. Um, when it comes to these penetrations, this one actually goes underneath. It doesn't penetrate the footing itself. Um, it's buried deeper and then uh, was backfilled and compressed. Um, these plastic bits, they're just a, a plug so I didn't get any concrete or now dirt down in there. Um, this one's for fresh water. So this is gonna be a PEX pipe, um, probably the PEX pipe that I use. And the idea being that I can feed this down and it'll come out the other side. It also allows me to replace the pecs later on, uh, not have to worry about if I'd actually just buried the pecs. Um, and then, you know, if a crack or something happened underneath, um, I'd have some real trouble. So this will allow me to pull the pecs out, replace it if I ever need to. Um, same story for the ones on the other side, which is the electrical. Uh, you might've noticed there's three coming out there. That's gonna be because I'll separate the conductors um, and have the two hot and the neutral um, coming through each on their own, probably an unnecessary safety measure. Um, but you know, this stuff's cheap and burning down your house isn't. Um, and yeah, uh, the last one will be uh, where the septic's coming out, um, but I'm gonna have to dig to expose that one and uh, that'll be a bit of a job for later on. So um, yeah, everything looks good to me. I'm pretty happy with how it went considering it's my first big pour like this, 10 yards. Um, so yeah, now we're starting to move up. The house is actually being built back up after all this time of prep. So um, I'm gonna start putting out videos more frequently. Obviously we're in building season now, the weather's beautiful today. And uh, if you wanna see the house get built, uh, then subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.